hello everyone and you're welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for clicking in in today's tutorial we are going to be learning how to make this round pleated to band cap which has a round pleated frame and smoking design attached to it this particular tutorial has been requested for by so many of our subscribers and i'm so happy we are finally going to be working on it today please if you are just joining us for the first time and you are yet to subscribe to our channel please kindly do so by clicking on the subscription button and also on the bell icon now in today's tutorial the materials to use include scuba fabric for the base and the pleated frame one yard will be enough satin fabric for the smoking design half yard will be enough and then you have your scissors a measuring tape your matching color of thread and needle you have your gum and then your pearls or your stones as well as your tailor's chalk pattern paper pen and ruler this design which we are working on has a tuban base it's a pleated tuban base it has the round pleated frame on it and the round pleated frame is going to be having a handle at the back and it has a design on one side of the round pleated frame and that design is gotten or is derived from a smoking pattern so the tuban base the pleated frame with handle and the smoking pattern design this make up the tuban design that we are working on so before now i've made my fab i've cut out my fabrics so i'll just go ahead to state the fabric cut out and the measurements and then we'll continue from there so starting with the tuban cap this is my piece of fabric for the tuban cap and the measurement for this is 23 inches for the head circumference which is the length from year to year while the width is 21 inches okay it depends on the number of pleats that you want to achieve of your fab on your fabric please note that the number of pleats you like to achieve on your fabric will determine the width of your fabric but i'm working with 23 by 21 inches for the tuban base so this is it now coming to the pleated frame design the round pleated frame that is going to be on the tuban base I have my fabric here the measurement for this is 24 inches okay the length of the head circumference from this point down to this point is 24 inches while the width is 30 inches so anywhere between 26 to 30 inches is okay you can also decide to make it 36 inches now the width depends on how high you want your pleats to be but i'm working with 24 inches for the length which is the head circumference and then 30 inches for the width so that is it for the fabric for the pleated frame and then we have the fabric for the handle that is going to be at the back of the pleated frame i have two pieces of fabric here the length is 12 inches and the width is 5 inches so 5 inches for the width 12 inches for the length i cut it out twice because it's a band design we have a two handle at the back for time so five inches by 12 inches cut out twice and then finally we have the fabric for the smoking design here this is it okay and the measurement for this fabric is 18 inches for the width then 30 inches for the length 18 by 30 inches okay so this is my fabric from year to year is 18 inches why this length from year to year is 30 inches 18 by 30 inches which is this is a quarter of a yard or better say half of half a yard which is quarter of a yard so 18 by 30 inches that's what i'm working with so for this tutorial one yard of scuba fabric is enough for your to band design and then half a yard of your satin fabric is enough for your design we are using the scuba fabric for the tuban base and the and the pleated frame while the satin fabric is for the smoking design in place of this you can as well decide to use your raw silk fabric for both the base the pleated frame 
and your smoking design that depends on you so first and foremost we'll be starting with the to band cap i'll be sending a different video and in that video you'll be it will be lost the to band cap the pleated to band cap will be illustrated and then you get how to do that and then after that move on to the smoking design and then the round pleated frame as well so the to band cap first i'm going to get my fabric for my tuban cap which is my tuban base and then i'm going to start by folding in one end um, about one inch in okay i'll be folding it down this way and then i can get my pins to help me hold it in place or better still i'll just get this down on my sewing machine and then make a straight stitch down to the end now as soon as i'm done with that i'm going to continue again i'll make another pleat on it this way i'll pleat my fabric again and then as you can see i've made a second pleat on it and then i'll get this on my sewing machine and sew on it again for the second pleat now if i so desire i want to make a third pleat i'll also pleat my fabric this way And then place on my sewing machine and then sew on it again to make the third stitch so this is how to achieve the pleated base now the number of pleats you are going to create on your fabric depends on the width of your fabric so for me i'll be creating about three to four to four um, pleats on my fabric and then this is how to do it now i want to emphasize that while stitching on your fabric each pleat okay should hide the thread from the first pleat like now after making my sewing stitch here you are going to be seeing the thread using sewing then the second pleat coming on the first pleat should be positioned in such a way that the thread from the first stitch will be hidden same after that same also applies to the second stitch the thread for sewing will be showing at the edge so the third pleat should also cover it up it should be hidden inside the place where the thread is allowed to show is only on the last pleat, okay? The thread is to be shown on the last pleat at the edge. That is the only place where it should be sewing. But other pleats before the last pleat should hide the sewing thread. I'm going to stitch now and when I come back, I will show us what I'm trying to illustrate so that we can get it better. Okay, right before me on my working surface, I have my piece of fabric and as you can see the edge has been pleated and has sewed now if you go back you can see the sewing stitch from the first pleat which is being hidden by the fab fabric used for the second pleat and then you can also see that the sewing stitch for the second stitch is hidden by the fabric for the third pleat and then the only place where the sewing stitch is showing it's on this last pleat here and that is how it is expected to be that is how it should be done now this is the front view and then this is the back view of my work so that is it for the pleats at this point we are going to be forming our cap okay and to do that I'm going to be folding my fabric into two with the fine side inside and the wrong side outside Okay, and then I'm going to be making a curve on my cap. Now you can decide to measure this out, or you can also decide to just follow your initiative and make out your curve on your cap, just like we do for our tuban cap. Now to do that, from this end, I'm going to measure out six inches, and on this end, I'm going to measure out four inches. Okay, and I'm done with that. I have my six inches mark here and I have my four inches mark. So I'm going to get my chalk and I'm going to make a curve from this point to this point to connect it together. 
before getting my scissors to cut it off. So this is it. I'm going to get my scissors now and I'm going to be cutting it off. So as soon as that is done, this is what I have. This is how it looks like. Now I'm going to get this on my sewing machine and I'm going to be stitching from the band down this way and then down to this end. Okay, from the band all through this way down to this very end. And after sewing, I'm going to get back to show us what to do next. Right before me is my cap and then I've joined everything, okay? Starting from the pleats, I've sewn down to this end here and so I have my cap. Now to conclude this, I'm going to get my thread and my needle and I'm going to be making a running stitch, okay? I'm going to be making a running stitch along this edge to form the cap. Now my running stitch is going to be coming immediately after the pleats so my running stitch will start immediately after the pleats my pleats ends here and so begins my running stitch and i'm going to use my needle and thread to make my running stitch down to this end so having my needle and thread here i'm going to start passing in my needle in and out till i get to the end of the fabric please always ensure that your thread is doubled so that it can last longer and not easily get loose Okay, so I haven't done that. This is the inner part of the cap. And then, on turning it inside out, this is the front view of the cap. And then this is the back view of the cap. So this is how to achieve the pleated. So this is it. And I have my two-band cap already sewn. So I'm going to keep this aside while we proceed with the tutorial. As soon as that band cap is ready, the next time I'll be working on is a round pleated frame that is on the two band cap. I have my fabric here and the next thing I'll be doing is I'll be pleating my fabric to form that design. Pleating is the way we pleat a normal auto -gilly. Okay, so I'll just start from here. So this is it and then I'm going to get my needle and thread a piece of fabric and then tie it at the middle part to help me hold it in place while I go ahead to tag this down together. And so I've been able to secure this down. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to get my needle and thread. I'm going to be tacking it down at the middle. So I'll start passing it from the base down here and I'll pass my needle and thread until it comes up at the top on the other side and then please as you're passing your needle and thread ensure that you set or you arrange your fabric in place properly so it's up from this uppermost part and then I'll pull the thread and then take back my needle inside again I'm going to repeat this a couple of times until I'm sure that yes it's secure then i'll go ahead to cut off my excess thread and move on to the next spot So I'm done with this middle part and then I'm going to go ahead and keep extending this my pleats down to the end so that I can tack it down to the same way I'm working for this left side the same thing applies to the left to the right side so as, I'm, so as soon as I'm done working for this side I'll move over to the left side and then continue to. So I'll get my needle and thread now. 
and then turn this down to hold it in place. So the same way I tag down this middle part and this side, the way I'm going to tag down this end, and the way I'm also going to arrange down this end and then tack it down. So I'm going to go off camera to complete this, and as soon as I'm done, I'll get back for us to continue. At this point, I'm done making my round pleated frame as you can see. This is how it looks like. And the next thing we're going to be doing is to attach it down to a tuban cap. And then right here, I have my tuban cap and I have my design. I have to locate the middle of my tuban cap and also go ahead to locate the middle of my pleated frame. So this is it. I have the middle point here. And then I'm going to place the frame on the tuban cap and ensure that the middle point aligns together. And then we're going to be tacking down together with our needle and thread. So I'll start by passing my needle and thread from inside the tuban cap. And then I'll take it upwards. So I'm passing from inside the tuban cap upwards to my pleats. You can try to take it all the way to the top and then you have to bring it back again in order to secure it. So I haven't done that. I'll start by tacking down the, the frame to the design on the left side. So my needle and thread is out. I'm going to pass it inside again. And as soon as it's inside, I'm going to now extend it to the next point, down to the next point that I want to tap down to the cap. Then I'll pass my needle and thread inside again. So I'll go again, pass my needle and thread down to the next point two, in that order. So this is how to go about stacking down the, the base and the frame together. So I'm going to go off camera to complete this. And as soon as I'm done with this, I'll get back. So this is my work. As you can see, I've tacked down this left side. From the middle part down to the left side, I'm done tacking, and this right side. Okay, we'll be tacking down the right side, but it's not now. It will be later on. So, here's the left side and the right side. The left side already tacked. The reason why we're leaving this side this way for now is because we have to attach a smoking design on it before tacking down and tacking down to the base. So, the next thing we're going to be doing now is to attach the handle. We're going to be attaching the handle of our design on both sides, both the left and the right side. Going over to my handle, my handle is going to be attached to my pleated frame and I have both pieces of fabric here. What I'll be doing is that I'm going to be trimming this a bit because the more tiny the handle is, the more it will stretch when tight. So I'll fold it into two this way and then trim it off like this. And after I trim it off, I will place it on my sewing machine and then sew from one side, that is from this end down to this other end, and then turn it um, inside out. The same thing should be done for this second piece of fabric that I have. So I'm going to go back to complete this and get back as soon as This is my fabric already sewn. And then I'll go ahead to trim it, trim the excess off and turn the fabric inside out. So this is it and I'm done turning it inside out. I'm going to get my tuban design and then I'm going to fold in the edge a bit because this open end is going to be free so I'll fold it a bit. I'll fold it in a bit.
then pass my my the end of my work inside of it so this is it i've added both handle on both sides and we are going to proceed with stacking This is all done. I'm done at tacking down this and handle and this other handle. So the next thing we are going to be doing is we're going to be working on the smoking design, which we are going to be adding to this. Now for my smoking design, I'm going to illustrate first. I'll be illustrating first on a plain piece of paper to enable us get it better. And whatever I'm doing for this piece, or whatever I'm doing on this piece of paper should also be done on your fabric which should be cut out before now so i'll be needing my ruler as well now remember that the measurement for our fabric is 18 inches by 30 inches and then we have that already so the next thing i'm going to be doing is that i'm going to be drawing uh, my grid lines on my piece of fabric and then for the grid lines, the grid lines is the boxes. And then after uh, drawing out the boxes before you draw the pattern on it. This is the basic, the basics of every smoking design. You first need to draw out those boxes before drawing out your pattern in it. Now in order to create a design that is uniform and well defined, you need to ensure that the measurement of each of the boxes you'll be drawing are all the same. So if for your boxes you are using interval, or if you are using an interval of 2 inches, everything should be 2 inches each. If you are using 1 inch, then everything should go with 1 inch each. But for this design on this particular, for this smoking design on this particular tuban headpiece, I'm going to be working with 1 inch by 1 inch. So each of the boxes I'm going to be drawing, each of the grid lines I'll be drawing, the measurement should be one inch by one inch now if you were to be working on your fabric you will have to get your measuring tape and then place it on your fabric and measure out one inch by one inch one inch by one inch in that order and then make use of your ruler to mark it out but i'm illustrating with a piece of paper and another thing is that this particular ruler i'm using the width of the ruler is one inch so because of that i don't need to make use of my measuring tape again so all i just have to do is place this my ruler on my fabric and start ruling it out or just rule it out it's quick it's easy and it's fast it does not require the use of uh, my measuring tape anymore because the ruler itself is one inch so if you can get any ruler that is one inch one inch for the width it will save you that stress but if you do not have you have to make use of your measuring tape to mark it out on your fabric and then please i also want to emphasize that these grid lines we are drawing we're going to be drawing these lines or these boxes and the design itself is going to be on the fine side of the fabric not on the wrong side of the fabric you are drawing these lines and the smoking design on the fine side of your fabric now i haven't said all that And this is it for this side. Then I'll come over to the other side. So as soon as I'm done marking out my grid lines, this is what I have. And then you go back to your fabric and then repeat the same thing. Now, please, I also want to say that the length of your fabric that you are using the measurement of your fabric and the measurement of your grid line have how do i put it now they they work together because if i am um, to use two inches by two inches for my grid lines this measurement i'm using 18 by 30 inches is too small for the two inches uh, for the two inches measurement i'll be using for the grid lines so if I want to use 2 inches by 2 inches for 
the grid lines on my piece of fabric, I have to increase the length and the width of my satin fabric. Okay, so that is how it is. The length and the width of your grid line affect the length and the width of your fabric. That is the final outcome of the design at the end of the day. Because when you finish drawing your pattern on your fabric, I'm going to go ahead to stitch the smoking pattern on the fabric. The fabric shrinks. It reduces in size and in width. But then that is, that is aside. Now I'm done with this. The next one we're going to be doing is we're going to draw our pattern. But before drawing our pattern, I'm going to leave my sewing allowance. So this first line here, I will not be marking on it. This first line here, I will not be marking on it. This last line here, I will not be marking on it. And then this last one here, I will not be marking on it. So that serves as my margin or my sewing allowance. Now coming to the pattern, coming to a smoking pattern, I'm starting from this box here. So I'm just going to be drawing an X sign. So this is it. And then I'll skip one box. Come over to the next one. And repeat the same thing. I'll skip one box. Come over to the next one. Repeat the same thing. Skip this one. And then come over to the next one. So I'm not drawing anything here. Then just as I left here, I'm leaving this. Then I'm going to skip the next row. This entire row. I'm skipping it. Then I'm coming over here. I repeat the same thing. Then I'll go ahead to fill it down. But remember, you are skipping each box. You are skipping one box in between. So I'll skip this one. And then come down. And mark it. I'll skip this one come down and mark it skip this one and then come down and then mark it so that is it and to continue i'll go i'll go back again and then skip this whole line and mark the next box And I'll keep doing that until I get to the end, like I did for the others. So this is it. This is how it looks like. This is the front view. So you continue this one till you get to the end of your fabric. And then when placed like this, this is how it looks like. So this is the pattern that we're going to be working on, that we're going to be um, creating on our fabric. So I'm going to go back and then duplicate this or replicate this on my fabric and then get back. And then I have my fabric here. This is it. So you can see the markings on my fabric. Okay. The lines are a bit faint because of the chalk, color of chalk I used. And please, remember I said you are marking on the fine side of your fabric and not on the wrong side. Now, if you observe carefully, you see that this entire first line, there is no marking there. And then at this edge, there is no marking there. Then this other edge, there is no marking there. The same thing applies to, to this other lower part of the fabric. There is nothing here. So this is it. My fabric has been marked down. And then the next one we're going to be doing that, we're going to be illustrating how to go about stacking this design that we've already marked out. Now, coming over to tacking, we have a pattern here. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to pass our needle through this point here, pass it here, pass it here, pass it here, and then pass it again through this part that we started from. We now arrange the fabric at the middle and then tack down the middle together. So I'll take it again. 
year, pass it to year, pass it to year, pass it to year, and pass it back to where you started from. Arrange your fabric and then tack down the needle. So I have my needle and thread. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but then there's an X sign here. So I'm starting from here. And then I'll just pass my needle directly to this other side here. And then coming over to this side here. And then this side here. And then I'll take it back to where I started from. And then I'm going to pull my fabric. So after pulling my fabric, I have it this way. And then... Now, if you watch, there are four points here. One, two, three, and four. So I'm just going to bring it out properly. Bring this part out. Then adjust this part. And then bring this part. So I have like four petals here. One, two, three, four. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'll fold it two to one. I'll bring these two to one side. Bring this other two to one side. And then I'm going to go ahead to tag down the middle several times. Or two to three times to secure it. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'll cut off my SS thread and then move over to the next pattern I have on my fabric. So this is it after sewing. I have it this way. Now coming over to the second pattern, I'm going to illustrate the tacking again once more. I have an X, an X pattern here and then I'll go ahead with tacking. I want to first knot my thread at the end and then as soon as i'm done with that we'll continue so like i illustrated earlier i'm starting from here and then i'll pass my needle to this other end here and then i'm coming down to this point here i'll pass my needle there And then I'm coming over to this end here. I'll pass my needle here. And then I'll take it to where I started from. Pass it there again. And then pull my fabric. So that I have it like this. And then after pulling my fabric, I earlier explained that there are four points one two three four so i'll just get to open it up and set it in place so that it looks like a petal and so this is what i have now i'm going to be sharing it two to one this two to one side and then this other side another two to one side so that i have the center this way and then i'll get my needle and thread and then tack through the middle part until it's secured then i'll go ahead to cut off my ss thread and move on to the next point so this is it and i have two designs ready now the same thing is applicable to the third design and the other uh, patterns that I have on my fabric. So the same way I illustrated, stitching down this part and this part is the same way that you go about tacking down the other patterns that have been drawn on the fabric. 
um, in order to shorten the length of the video and the size of the video i'm going to go off camera to complete right this here, i have my work as you can see i've folded it into to have sewn it and i've cut off the ss fabric that i had earlier so i'm going to gradually turn my design inside out i have my work here already turned inside out and then we'll be adding this to our tuban cap and then tuban frame so this is my tuban frame this is the part that we did not add to the base i'm going to start passing this inside my fabric you have to be very patient while doing this so that you don't cause your stitches to start getting loose now please ensure that you have the sewn part of your fabric at the back so that it will be on the base okay pull this up all to the end to the middle part where your last stitch where you have your last stitch and then go ahead to fold in these rough edges inside right here i have my work and then i folded in this edge i folded it in also coming down to the base i've gone ahead to fold it in so it's like this part here, there's excess fabric here, so I'll just gather it, then fold it down, and then tack it down. So I'm going to now go ahead to tack down this fabric down to the base. You can tack or you can glue down, whichever one is convenient for you, that's what you'll be doing. So this other part here, I also have to either tack or glue it down so that it does not pull off while it's being worn. So I'm going to do this. I want to use, I will use my gum, your candle gum or your UAG gum or your B sister and apply it inside and then glue this down. Then come over to this other part. I folded in this side, apply and glue it down. Then I'll get my needle and thread and then tack this down together. Or better as to make use of your uh, candle gum and glue gum. Apply gum and especially this one part that we're having here and then glue it down to the base. That is how to go about it to join the fabric to your designs i'm going to do that and then get back to show us how i'll place it on the dummy head to give us an idea of what so good this is the front view of my design this is the side where we have the smoking and then the back view and then the front view so what we're going to be working on next is the embellishment aspect now, coming it. to embellishment We'll be needing our gum and our stone. I have my stones here and I also have my gum here. So what I will be doing is that on each stone part, okay, and this part where we had to stitch, where we had to stitch the middle through with our needle and thread because the thread is visible. I will start applying gum at that point and after applying gum, I will then place my stones on it and that is how I'm going to cover this entire fabric with my stone. I'm making use of Dubai stones. It's different from the normal stones you have but then if you don't have access to it, you can make use of whatever you have access to. So this is how to go about it and then i'm going to do this until i've covered this entire fabric that i have here.